Okay guys, so I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time if I'm honest. Um, I feel that um, within our industry we get to sort of see lots of different videos on YouTube and on Facebook and social media um, and they're probably all telling us different things. Um, so when it comes to people coming on training, I, I feel like they're getting quite confused as to uh, form application, why we do it the way we do it. So what I decided to do was a little experiment basically. I'm going to do three nails and we're going to do three different form applications. Uh, one's going to be tilted down slightly, one's going to be completely straight from the nail and the other one is going to be um, tilted up slightly. And that way you can then hopefully see what effect that has on the shape of the nail. Now I've not had a practice at this to see whether you know it's going to show it or not so this is all going to be um, you know it will hope and, and see that you can actually see what it does to that shape of that nail and then you can choose which which version of um, a form application suits you the most because what I'm not saying is that somebody who's, who tilts it down is wrong or somebody who tilts it up is wrong or somebody who does it straight is wrong what I'm saying is that there are different ways to do it and I want to find out uh, what the best way is for, for you or for your client so we're going to have a bit of a play and see what's going to happen um, I'm just prepping my nails so I'm just pushing my cuticles back I've only just took off some elastic hard gel um, so they've been prepped quite a bit already so I'm just pushing my cuticles back and making sure that there's no excess on there dust that off I'll give them a light file because like I say I've just took off some elastic hard gel so they shouldn't need too much and hopefully I stay in camera the whole time because I'm not used to doing my own nails on camera, I'm used to doing other people's. But I didn't want to send a client out or a model out with different nails, so I thought I'd do them on myself. I'm going to be using um, Perfect Nails Acro Gel today, um, just because I like it on my nails, it really suits my nails. I'm going to make sure this nail is nice and clean now just with some prep. Give them a good scrub. And then we can go on and start to apply our form. So like I said, I'm going to do three different form applications. So the forms that I tend to use the majority of the time, so for so normal salon nails, not extremes or anything like that, is the perfect nails bat forms um, lovely and comfortable to work with nice stickiness to the forms so they don't pop open while you're working or anything like that not too floppy but not too firm um, so yeah I like these forms a lot so I'm putting the tab on the bat just to give that form extra strength and I'm going to give that form a nice curl in between my thumbs so that it's got a curved surface going on to a curved nail. Okay, so let's do, oh, let me think. We'll do this one going down slightly. So I don't need to, they're never as easy to put on yourself, are they? I don't need to open the tab at the back here because this one's gonna tilt down slightly. So it doesn't matter about that tab at the back. So make sure that my tab's underneath are nice and equal. We've got no unevenness. So if you see from the side angle, that form is tilting down only slightly. We're not talking, you know, a claw nail. It's just tilting down ever so slightly. Okay, so the next one, my middle finger, we're going to go completely straight. Same again. Tab out onto the back. So this time I'm going to open that form at the back, that rip at the back there, and give that form a curl. 
again you always want to give it a curl and you want a form that holds that curl so when you let go it's still got a curl to it not a flat form because it's much harder to put a flat form onto a curved surface so we want this one to come out straight I'm just tucking it underneath my nail and then from my side angle oh it's so much harder to put forms on yourself isn't it side angle that's on I want it to come out super straight so I would say about there so if we look at these tabs at the back they are slightly separated but only a little bit not a lot so then let's put our tabs underneath together is that still nice and straight I would say it's just ever so slightly tilted up so let's just adjust that's better okay I'm just going to be doing basic square nails no unusual shapes or anything like that you can always do that on another video so then my third nail I'm going to tilt my form slightly up now this is my personal preference this is what I personally teach and personally choose to do curl under the nail and try and get let go of the form without it sticking there we are and then I want it to slightly tilt up so I want to keep these tabs out tilt that form up slightly again only slightly not you know it's not going to be a ski jump nail or anything silly like that so you can see those tabs at the back then are further apart they're about a centimeter apart which is what I teach so if we compare those two together there these two tabs here I've only got maybe half a centimeter these two tabs here I've got about a centimeter so that makes the form at the front tilt up slightly so let's try and look at these from the side angle so you can see this one is going up only slightly this one is nice and straight and this one is going down slightly so we're going to get three different views on this now let's just check that they're all straight yeah okay so the next thing we're going to do is use our flexi scissors which is these scissors nice and straight and we're going to make some diagonal cuts let me try and get this on camera for you so where your natural nail meets the form you want to make some diagonal relief cuts same on both sides same depth on both sides and those are going to be your relief cuts and I'll explain that in a second let me just do another two fingers you can do it with normal scissors but I do find these ones so much easier to get down with so again the form application from this point onwards is exactly the same it's just the angle of the form that we've changed okay so what happens when you do these relief cuts when you pinch this form together now from underneath the form under the nail plate under the free edge goes thinner can you see that so it's now not wider if you compare the two can you see how wide this one is compared to this one so then you're going to create a nice C curve on that nail and you're not going to end up with sort of wider more pregnant looking nails okay so that's my form application done and again we'll just go from the side 
this one she down, this one she straight, and this one is going up. But I might just go just a little bit higher actually. So I'm just opening these tabs at the back, tilting that form up a little bit, just a tad. That's better. That's better. So yeah, still about a centimetre, not much, but I like it to just go up slightly. Okay. Okay, so we're going to prep and prime. Just like you would with any gel or acrylic system. You want to make sure that that nail plate's nice and clean and dehydrated. And then you're going to apply your primer so that you've got a good pH balance matching the product. Remember primer shouldn't touch the skin. It should just go on to natural nail. Okay. So my next step is to do a base layer of gel. And again, this is probably something that some people have never heard of either. Um, whenever I do um, gel, hard gel or acro gel or poly gel, whatever you want to call it, I would always do a base layer of scrubbing gel. I'm putting the tiniest amount on the nail. Uh, I'm using Perfect Nails Elastic Hard Gel and this is clear. And it's really not a lot of product on that nail. Tiny, tiny amounts because what we're going to do, um, I'm using a gel grand brush and we're going to use this as like a scrubbing layer. Now why is it important to do a scrubbing layer? You have filed that nail, you have prepped that nail with a 180 grit file. A bit of glitter in this but never mind. Um, um, so the nail is not smooth, it's not perfectly smooth, it's got ridges and it's got natural ridges there as well. And what this is doing is filling those ridges in so that you get a better full adhesion with the product. So this scrubbing layer is so important. It's important in gel polish, it's important in hard gel, it's important in acro gel or poly gel. That scrubbing layer is going to fill all those little gaps in. So I'm being really quite forceful with my brush. I really have got quite a bit of glitter in this. Um, I'm forcing it into any grooves, pits, file marks, anything into that nail. Not touching cuticle or skin, really forcing it in. Now if your nails look shiny when you've finished, like a wet layer, then you've used too much product. But can you see how when I move it in the light, you can still see scratches, which is what you want. That's going to go into the lamp to cure. Just 30 seconds is perfectly fine, because it's such a thin layer. Um, it, 30 seconds is enough. So this is the Acro Gel I'm going to be using. Um, it's the cover. Um, as you can see, it doesn't move. It's got very little self-leveling properties in it. You do have to level it yourself. Um, but you can see it still is a gel because of that lovely shine on it. It's not a powder. So you're going to need a spatula. And I take it from the side of the pot. Uh, and scoop up. So, probably a bit more than a pea size. Maybe more like a, um, I don't know, sweet corn size, something like that. And place it on to that nail. You can do all three at the same time because, as you can see, it's not going to move. So this product, if you are a little bit slower at doing nails, is great because you can do a lot of sort of bulk work together. You're not doing one at a time, um, so it's great for that. Just move that. So I like to use um, this is an acrylic brush. Uh, it's the Master Ten, 
Um, I like to use an acrylic brush. You can use a gel brush. Uh, you can use an acrylic brush. It's your choice. It's your preference on what brush you use, what brush you get on with the most. You will need to use the Acrogel solution. So what you do, I've, got, I've just got a little pot just off camera um, and I've just loaded my brush up with it and then I'm going to soak some of it out so that it's not um, wet, it's just damp and then I can start to move this product around. So I'm going to go down to my cuticle area first and my side walls I'm going to do that on all three. As soon as you feel that Acrogel may be sort of sticking to your brush a little bit, just reload your brush with that bit of the solution and then you can go back in and it won't stick. But if you feel it starting to stick, just dampen that brush again. So coming into my cuticle first. Again, we don't want to touch, we want to get as close as we can but no touching. Okay, so that's another cuticle and sidewall done. Just dampen my brush again and do this one. The product is soft, so you don't need to apply lots of pressure, you can be really quite gentle. So if you look at that cuticle application already, it's, uh, it's not far off. Okay, so now let's work on our length and structure. So again, just dampening my brush a little bit and start to create my length and structure. Now I'm using the belly of the brush. I'm not using the point of the brush. I'm using the belly of the brush. And my brush is at a nice flat angle as well. I'm not going super long. These are just salon length nails. I wanted to sort of show you what the majority of you would probably do in salon most of the time. On to the next one. So again, just dampen my brush slightly. Belly of my brush, nice flat angle, start to sculpt that length in. We are going to pinch, so everything is exactly the same other than that form angle. That's the only thing we've changed and I'm hoping that that will give us a good view on what that does, what changing that form angle does. That's what I'm hoping. Anybody else shake when they're doing their own nails? I always shake when I'm doing my own nails. I don't think I've got very strong muscles in my hand. Okay, so we can now just spend just a little bit of time just perfecting these. So making sure that we've definitely not got anything on the skin. We can perfect our shape a little bit. But obviously don't worry too much because everything is fileable. Just make sure I've got down that side wall on that side. That's sort of my blind side. Using that point of my brush to make sure that I've really got a good side wall. Again, I'm just missing a little bit of product on that side. You can do it in two layers, you don't have to do it in one. Don't feel that you've got to do everything in one. I'm going to do two. Make sure we've not got any on the skin. If you feel it's starting to stick, just dampen your brush. But the, the amazing thing about this product is it's already pretty smooth and even, so we don't have to do a lot of filing after. And even when we do a lot of filing after, uh, it's very soft to file. 
Okay, so we're going to just do a flash cure in the lamp, just 10 seconds. Maybe not even that, maybe it's just sort of five or six. And then we're going to pinch. Okay. Then we can pinch. It's a nice pinchable product, so you get a good C curve when you pinch as well. And then you're going to go back in for that full 60 second cure. Okay, so now I can just check from my side angle if I'm happy. Have I got a good apex on the mould? Do they need any more product? And I would just say probably more my apex than anything that just needs a tiny bit more. I like to have my apex nice and far back on that nail so that I get a good few weeks out of them before they need doing. But if you're happy with your one layer, you don't have to do two layers. It's completely your choice. This is just a thin layer just to make sure that I've covered everywhere and that I'm happy with my apex. Again, just keep dampening that brush as soon as you start to feel any stickiness whatsoever. You can lightly brush, and that makes it as smooth as possible. So you've got less filing to do. I'm just sort of rolling my fingers and looking at all those different angles and making sure I'm happy with where my product is sat. So if you're doing it on a client, again, you'd just be moving their finger to all different angles and making sure that you are happy and satisfied. check. Just pop a little bit down on my blind side on this side. I don't know if you can see that on camera. be a contortionist to film yourself. Okay, into the lamp for a full cure of 60 seconds. 
Okay, we can pop that away now. Make sure we cover it up so we don't get dust in it. Then I'm going to take my forms off and I also like to turn my hand over and give them a full cure um, underneath um, because you, you're never 100% sure if it's cured with the, the dark form there. So take the form off um, and then just pop your hand upside down back into that lamp. So forms can come off. And back in upside down. It will have a slight sticky layer when it comes out, so just use your gel cleanse to get rid of that sticky layer. Okay, so let's just have a look now, see if we can see anything. So this one was the one that was going down, which I can see it is tilted down slightly. This one was the one that's going straight, and this was the one that was going up a bit. Let's have a look at C-curves. About the same, I would say. Okay, let's give them a file. I think what might be interesting as well is if we come back to these nails in a couple of weeks and see how they've grown, how they've turned out a few weeks later after your natural nail has grown a bit. You know, have we got anything that is the one that's tilted down, tilting down a bit more? What are they doing? So I think that might be interesting to do as well. So I'm just working side walls and free edge first. Like I said, it's very, very soft to file. Uh, this it's not like a hard acrylic it's uh, it definitely feels more like a gel to file than an acrylic So now I can file on top. I do like to do long filing. So instead of sort of going side to side, I like to go down the length of the nail back towards my apex area. That way I can see the thickness of my nail and where I've got to file. I can look down there and see that I still need to file here. And anyone who sort of struggles with consistency of their nails, this is a good little tip is to do each step of your filing. So I did my uh, sidewalls and free edge first, now I'm doing my top filing first and then I'll come back and do my cuticle work first, uh, third sorry. And that way you get a much more even consistent look to your nails rather than just doing one at a time. Again, just looking down, tiny bit more here.
Okay, cuticle area, nice and gentle. Don't take away that back apex by overfiling. It's always good to practice any technique on yourself so that you know how it feels, how close you can get with your product, how close you can get with your file. So I'm going to downgrade my file now, that was a 150, so I'm moving on to a 180 now to do any refining work. So again I go back to my shape, sidewalls, free edge, make sure everything's nice and straight. Then I go on to my top and refine anything of that. Make sure that I'm firing all the way down. So I'm not just looking at my free edge thickness, I'm looking at the whole entire nail all the way down. Very much looking at my nail from this angle to see if the thickness is even all the way down and if I tilt that nail down can you see that there is bulk on this right hand side still because I've not filed that so if you move that nail in that light you can see that there's bulk all the way down that right hand side so really looking at what you're actually filing you're not just filing happy filing I call it for the sake of it you're actually looking at what you're filing, why that needs filing. Tiny bit more. And then refining that cuticle area. And again, don't file away your apex. You spent some time creating that apex and putting it exactly where you want it, so don't then file it away. So nice and gentle with that file, not pressing on too hard and taking that lovely apex away that you've created. So I've got that apex coming up and then a nice straight finish. Shape. Now I feel that this nail looks flatter than my ring finger nail. So I'm thinking that I don't like this shape on me. Definitely not got as much C curve to it. And that was the one that we had the form flat. I mean, these are only going to be subtle differences, but it's what takes it from an, a nail, an okay nail to a lovely nail. I 
last one. So just because you've tilted your form down doesn't mean that you don't want straight side rolls. Again, because I'm not used to doing nails like this, I'm finding it harder to file because I feel like the end is tipped down, whereas normally my ends are nice and straight. So that's finding it, that's a bit strange on my filing technique. Let's have a look at the nail. Bit bulkier again. My hard side that obviously doing your own nails you've got a side that you struggle with a bit more. Have a look at all three. Definitely a bit longer on this one. Let's just take some down. Finish off with a buff. Just let's try and compare. Okay, so if we go side angle. This was the one that's tilted down slightly, this was the straight out, and this was the tilted up slightly. Definitely don't like this. I don't like this tilted down business at all. I don't mind that from the side angle, but from the top angle, it looks wider. That is, it's still my favorite. The tilting the form up ever so slightly, for me, I prefer. But like I say, there's no right or wrong. It's personal preference and you can sort of choose what you like the most, can't you? Got a little air bubble on there, but I'll sort that, that's not a problem. So yeah, tell me what you think, guys. Tell me what your preference is, if you have reasoning behind your preference or anything like that, you wanna support that decision, let me know. I also feel that because that one is a straight out nail, I've got less product there on my stress point because you can see my natural nail a little bit more whereas this one you can't so I think that makes a difference as well so yeah let me let me know your thoughts and I hope that this video of doing different form placements has helped and like I said I will try and um, come back in a couple of weeks time and show you um, what they're like a couple of weeks later okay Thanks for watching.